we saw what the real town in Oklahoma looked like and felt like and the people that lived there. And, you know, you know, we really wanted to emulate that. I love Echo. It reminds me of those series, kind of like a Sons of Anarchy and Ozark that's very grounded, but happens to take place in the MCU. I think the show's phenomenal. Um, how did you work with the uh, Choctaw Nation to tell Maya's story authentically and respectfully? Yeah, we had a great partnership with the Choctaw Nation. I'm glad you liked the show, by the way. Uh, we had a great partnership with the Choctaw Nation. Chief Batten uh, became a personal friend over the course of this show. It was so amazing to be able to work with him and his team, uh, Dr. Ian Thompson, who's a historian of Choctaw culture, was somebody that was literally on call to us at all times. That's we incredible. would be in VFX reviews and would get him on the phone and be like, hey, uh, our mounds at Bushto, we're putting in the vegetation, like what would it be based on? And it, he just always had the answers. He always helped us make sure that it was as authentic as possible. He, uh, not just Dr. Ian, but uh, a number of our friends on the Choctaw side were with us while we shot a lot of the sequences. It, it was great. It was great. And hopefully a mutually beneficial partner. So cool. Now, can you talk about building the visual lang language for Echo and working with Doug Ridloff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Doug Ridloff is one of our producers. He is deaf and he's a genius in his own right. Uh, any conversation you have with him is he's trying to teach you sign language while you're talking to him. Uh, and that was amazing. But the visual language was... It was so cool. He was with us at all times, making sure that each character had their own unique way of signing, mm. which was so true to life. And one of the aspects of the show that I think could have been taken for granted, but he made sure that every character used sign language in their own way and had different levels of proficiency. So that was cool. And then he worked with Sydney and our DPs to make sure that, you know, we were actually framing to see the sign language. Sure. So Sydney could speak to this a little better, but our the the closest close up on our show is one that you can still see hands in the frame, uh, and we weren't going to let, for example, non signing characters like Vincent have a close up that we wouldn't allow one of our signing actors to. Have. So it was really cool that the visual language of the show was established based on the practical uh, photography of shooting signing people. That's incredible. That is so cool. Now, um, I want to talk about the Marvel Spotlight for a second, because yeah. is this a long-term brand for the MCU shows, and can there be movies under this banner as well? Oh, interesting. Interesting. Well, I am a Marvel television executive and can speak to the television side that uh, we're definitely hoping to see more more obscure characters from the larger Marvel Comics canon brought to life and probably under the spotlight banner. Um, it's our way of taking a character like Maya Lopez, who, you know, was introduced as a side character in Daredevil Comics and saying, hey, this character deserves their own show, not because she crosses over with Daredevil, but because look how rich her story is and look how rich the story of these new characters we're introducing, her cousins, her family, her uncle, who's a criminal himself, sure. you know, getting to meet all these new characters. I think that's what Spotlight means to us is look at all these new characters that we know and love from the comics. Let's bring them to screen and just have some fun with them. Are there any plans to do a, a follow up season to Echo or is it more waiting into seeing how it performs on Disney Plus? It's, it's waiting to seeing. I think the hope is always when we introduce any of these characters that we get to see them again, whether it's in their own show or in somebody else's show but the goal is always to see them again in the future. Speaking of a character that we've seen before, uh, Wilson Fisk is back. Vincent D'Onofrio plays him brilliantly. I swear that guy has the gravitas. I just saw him on a video screen mm -hmm. and I was intimidated by the man. <laughs> um, uh, I was talking to Brad about this and, and I was talking about how he kind of feels like the street level version of Thanos where everything mm -hmm. is kind of converging on that. Um, is that the kind of like uh, goal or arc we're going with Wilson Fisk? for the foreseeable future? You know, I'm, I'm only uh, gonna speak on Echo, but I think sure. you should stay tuned and see where that character goes in the future. Uh, Cause what you're saying sounds awesome. It does, it does, right? Now, um, I love that this story takes place in a small town cause it feels so much more intimate. Can you talk about uh, the show taking place in, uh, is it t t Tamaha, Tamaha, Oklahoma and how the city itself almost feels like its own character? Yeah, that's so awesome uh, that you saw that. We we shot on location in Atlanta, but before we shot our show, we went down to Oklahoma with Sydney and all of our department heads, our production designer, our locations manager, and we saw what the real town in Oklahoma looked like and felt like and the people that lived there. And, you know, you know we really wanted to emulate that. And I think we did a pretty good job. And again, VFX we used to kind of fill out some of the backgrounds, like the stickball sequence, right. you know, putting in the mounds. But, but all of that was shot 
on location with some set work from our production designer, Chris Trujillo, and they did such amazing work. I don't know, I can't say enough good things about the team that brought that to life. Now, uh, I wanna talk about Maya's perspective of family because we see her go from uh, viewing family as selfish to selfless throughout the course of the series. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, that that is the big theme of the show, I think, right? Is that she was raised by Kingpin in New York as a criminal and was taught to be selfish. She was taught if you want something, go take it. Uh, don't let anybody stand in your way, no matter what the cost. And she grew up learning all of those lessons and never thinking that there would be anything else for her. And only at the onset of our series, when she is thrust back into her hometown of Oklahoma and is forced to kind of see some people from her past she never wanted to see again, or even, you know, a spiritual connection she feels to this town the second she enters town. Uh, I think she wasn't expecting to feel that way ever again in her life. And that's the fun of our show is seeing her have to navigate those feelings of, oh, I thought I had it all figured out. And now family is the reason that I don't. Like, I don't think that's something Maya ever expected. Now, uh, I want to talk about Kingpin again for a second. That uh, This is the first time we see his power kind of uh, reach outside of New York. How far does his reach extend outside of New York? That is a great question. It's something we definitely wanted to make feel like, oh, he's not just a New York guy. Right. This guy, it's definitely larger than it seems and larger than he would let the public to know, uh, especially, I want to say, going forward for his character. Ooh. Do you have a personal favorite character that you'd like to see spotlighted in the Marvel spotlight? From the comic? From the comics. Oh, interesting. Um, truly just what I would like to see personally Personal, one day. Yes. It's interesting because <laughs> I'm like, what am I allowed to say? This is just what I would like to sure. see one day. I am a big fan of the character Nova from the comics, oh, but, but yeah. Nova, who knows if that would be uh, a spotlight character or if that would be a bigger thing, you know, but... But it's, there's a lot of characters from the comics we haven't introduced yet that could get their own spotlight series. Look, man, Echo is absolutely fantastic. I loved every episode I saw. I got, still got three more to watch, but it's all dropping at once, and I cannot wait to just binge the series. Thank you so That's much awesome. for your time. Thank you. I love the show. Thank you.